Hey everyone, and welcome back to the KQM Theory Crafting Roundtable. This is episode number 21, and yes, we did check before we started. It's been about eight months since our last appearance, and nine months since our super heavy theory crafting show, where we raided all of the Sumeru units. But I hope that we can stay a little more on track with our topics this time around with, a, <laughs> with our new Clueless. format. Surely. And, Surely we can. Um, <laughs> Some of you might know that Ten Ten, one of our original hosts, has moved on from Genshin Impact Theory Crafting, but we do wish him the best of luck. And we've restructured the show a bit, but please first welcome our new persistent host, KB Fan. And how about you introduce yourself a bit? Hi, um, my name's KB. Uh, I do theory crafting over at Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. Parlor, uh, and uh, yeah. We, we we do a lot of TC <laughs> work. <laughs> yeah, we do a lot of TC work for characters really quickly too. Uh, <laughs> they do something over there, okay? Yeah. And of yeah. course, we're also joined by Zajif seventy seven, who has graciously Close. agreed to continue on with the roundtable. And for our reboot, maybe you want to tell graciously. maybe any new viewers about yourself. Uh, hello, I'm Zajif. I'm. I, I I I do theory crafting. It's Paul. Theory crafting extraordinaire, even. True. One might even say that. Some might say. And I am also the third, um, final persistent host, Artesians. I'm the head of theory crafting for Genshin Impact on Kaching mains, and have been for a long while now. So I might know a bit here or there. Probably. And now with our restructuring, we're also going to try out having shorter 30 to 40 minute conversations about one or two specific topics every two or three weeks. Um, since we had like a huge problem before of just like running out of things to talk about. And maybe we'll have a guest on every now and then to chat. And of course, we'll have a really short Q&A section at the, at the end for about five to 10 minutes. So that, but that, that's it. We're trying to keep this under an hour. All right. Well, surely. <laughs> surely, yeah. That's definitely happening. And for our triumphant return, everyone, what a topic we have today. Farina, the Hydro Archon. How many is that now? There's like four? Four out of the seven? Four? Yeah. Uh, no, wait. Is it five out of the seven? Is bro all right? I can't count, man. <laughs> is bro all right? Hello? Goodness. Anyway. Yeah, it is five, yes. Yeah, five. I was about to say, I'm miscounting. Okay. Initial impressions. What are our thoughts going... What were our thoughts going in? Um, and how do we like her? And maybe talk about how built our Farinas are at the moment. Because that could impact <clears throat> how you feel. I think she is pretty good. No way. No I think way. she's pretty good as well. Um, I think it's an interesting unit uh, in terms of her interacting with a lot of characters that didn't get as much love in the past. They kind of rose up with her. It's kind of similar how to when Nahida released a bunch of characters just popped up out of nowhere. I think she's also pretty good. Um, I did test Farina at C0 and then... I eventually climbed my way up to C3 because I'm probably just going to go further because I'm not really interested in anything else at the moment. But she felt pretty good, at least within the constraints that I set out for her teams, and I liked her quite a bit. Um, and moving on from there, like, what kind of teams are you guys enjoying right now? What's your favorite, maybe? You know, I think it's really... I've been playing a little bit of uh, Quick Bloom Raiden. Holy so, based. Uh, Raiden, Nahida, Baiju, Farina. Oh, it's that? EM, <laughs> Electro EM Raiden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I, I don't know what to think about it. I think it's funny, but it's really hard for me to judge how good it is. Do you run Emblem on that, or do you do uh, Deep Wood? I was on Gilded. Or, or Gilded, Gilded, I mean, yeah. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. Good. It's ER. ER Electro EM. Sorry, Holy. not EM Electro EM. Oh, what the? <laughs> no crap. Yeah, I, it's... what a chat. 
I I am cooking and I don't know if I know how to cook. <laughs> you know. I don't know if I if I deserve to be in the kitchen. All right, I see. I've been liking uh Noel and Wander. Yeah. I know some people might not like her with Wander cuz you're pretty exposed if you play Farina Wander, but there's something about just having really high attack speed and high damage that's super satisfying <clears throat> for that team. Uh, also been liking the Dendro teams, like uh, and Electro teams, like Aggravate and then Spread teams. I think they those work pretty well if you have a Baiju. Um, without Baiju, I don't know if I like the Dendro teams as much, but it's fine with uh, Yao Yao. And of course, my one of my favorite teams are Eula teams, and she is significantly like made all Eula teams less cringe. Or just Eula less cringe. Not all of her teams. <laughs> you you do have to run Mika, but now that character feels like it isn't like a dead weight healer character. Because before before Freena, I don't mm, didn't really like Mika with Eula. Now you no longer have to play within a circle too, so you can like all the the Eula mains can finally see six their Venets. No way this guy just said Eula teams. Yeah, you'll <laughs> She's good. <laughs> no, I, I she's, get it. She's all right just, now. She's know, all right. It's just, you know, it's Eula. It's um, been three years. <laughs> we finally have it. Finally, after how many supports is this? Like her fourth support? <laughs> yeah, the fourth fourth attempt, Rosaria and Bennett are finally benched. No way. From that. I have personally been enjoying Raiden hyper teams. But... When I'm not doing Red and Hyper, I really enjoy Quick Bloom. I think Quick Bloom teams are super fun with Freena. It's like, I don't know. I prefer the Kachink variant just because I'm just like flying around and I'm just kind of mashing my buttons. Yeah. But it just feels really good. Just there's so much leeway and there's just, just like yeah. you only get good from it. Yeah, I like it too. It's Pog. Big. Okay, well, moving on from that, um, one of the things that has been kind of going around in the TC circles is that there's this impression that Freena has some pretty big team building challenges, that there's certain constraints that you have to work around to properly make use of Freena. And that runs a little bit counter to like every, maybe the general crowd's impression that Freena might be the best unit in the game or one of the best buffers in the game. Um, without any like other qualifications or getting into the nitty gritty, of course. But like, how do we feel about that? I think it's just that like more casual players don't tend to set up their buffs on like all of their characters all that reliably, and it leads to characters, um, characters very often not get like getting the full value of their. Of their buffs when they're played in in supports, and with Farina, it's like very straightforward. It's kind of hard to mess it up, you know. I could have oh yeah two for ER. sure. Like that is definitely like a thing, right? Like some players don't want to worry about like VV setups or snapshotting things even. And for those players, like just popping on Farina, pressing EQ, and then leaving your your character, your old team's buff, you don't have to worry about. Just uh, your rotation as much. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I definitely understand that. But how do we feel about like that? F that impression that her teams are kind of hard to build around, rather than just her being easy to use. But the idea that she kind of needs a healer and eating up two slots to buff up one unit is a little bit of a departure from the normal type of support yeah i mean she she makes up for it though right like she yeah you do need two slots but in exchange you get a buffer that also has a good personal damage okay yeah there are some teams that suffer more from her uh like her just crowding out all the slots for example like if you are playing her with noelle right you don't have to worry about interruption resist or healing because that's all consolidated on noelle right but for example like the the Wanderer team I talked about, right? Generally, 
it's pretty difficult to fit interruption resist if you're playing Farina Wanderer. And that's kind of the cost of trying to go really hard into increasing your damage, right? It's also... Um, typically, if you were to like switch Farina out, or like if you were to switch Singcho or someone out for Farina, most people will find that it's much easier to die because your team is constantly draining even if you do have a healer. And usually if you're running a healer, right, you should feel pretty safe, but sometimes uh, her drain can be like problematic. You'll, you'll usually see that with uh, the weaker healers like Kuki, or you could arguably say Bennett if you're not building him for healing, but usually if you play Bennett with her, then you want to go like a, a pretty healing build to mitigate that. But that's like just an example of like her needing to bend some teams to yeah. comfortably fit, right? But I think yeah, the payoff is like pretty her, worth it. Her buff synergizes with like getting your healing done all at the beginning, right? Because otherwise you have a longer portion of your rotation with less fanfare, which means less big of a buff. But her HP drain makes it so that if all your healing is done at the beginning, then you'll be consistently low HP after the beginning. So it's like, it, it creates this, this situation where healing is valuable, both in a front-loaded sense and in a healing overtime sense. And I think it's pretty cool because it, it makes it so characters that can do both gain a little bit in value, right? Like Baiju, uh, Mika, right? Like the that, that that's pretty nice. Usually, I just run two healers so that I get both. I don't own True. <laughs> Truing. Um, yeah, your two healers are called Prototype Amber. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, that that kind of is the hard part of Rena at the moment, right? Determining whether or not that damage bonus, that 75% damage bonus, that's team-wide, that's an omni-damage bonus, uh, talent level 10 is worth um, using up two slots, right? Um, if you don't invest in your Farina very much, then she just doesn't have the personal damage to make up for um, any deficiencies, right? Uh, the idea that like she applies enough hydro or not enough hydro kind of runs at odds with like our traditional hydro like god tier units like Xing Zhou, of course. So there's like a lot of things going around with Brina, but we'll we'll take them a bit slowly here. So one of the most popular combinations is um Noviet or Kokomi with Farina. Have you guys play tested these much, or how are we feeling on these? How are the teams with them? I think they're overrated. Oh, All my dude. homies play Navidad with Deya. <laughs> this oh, guy. This guy. I think uh, she has a pretty big place for Nuvolet in the more dolphin level of investment in terms of like Primo Gems, right? Getting constellations. But at C0, I think it's pretty good. Um, the one thing is that you're kind of fighting for slots. As right now, if you were running her in a Nublet, you some people do like having interruption resists. I know Art and I generally don't bother with it for him, mm -hmm. but if you want those things, your your two options are kind of like Zhongli or Baishu, right? And if you go with Zhongli, then you you have to make your fourth unit a healer, which is kind of kind of eh. I don't like that as much. So it it is like quite a uh, an annoying thing to think about, right? But I think like in general, like she's not mandatory for him, right? You can play a lot of cool hyper bloom beam teams with Nubalet by himself. But if you want to see Nubalet's personal damage like spike up and you're like heavy investing into him she's a pretty good option for that right yeah i mean personally speaking i've never really had problems with no if you had damage <laughs> or really survivability like um in terms of ir so i actually don't really value it that much 
And if I do need it, I prefer Beto over most other choices. Um, I really, really, I personally do not like using Noifiet with Zhongli. And then if I throw Freeman What about Dea? <laughs> Truing. That's a real question. What about Dea? I think Noviet Dea, like, Naida works. There's no problem with that. Free yeah. You can throw that in there, too. Well, there's no healer, but I'm sure you can work something out with Prototype Amber. Double Prototype Amber, even. Um, the IR is nice. It's just, I personally have never really needed it, even on, like, the more chaotic, even the more chaotic chambers. I'm just kind of... I don't know. I feel like holding the S key is enough to not get hit by like most things. Yeah. The and, thing about Nivellet is like it's pretty hard not to get hit, but if you get hit, it feels really, really bad. Oh yeah, yeah. most definitely. If there's a chamber that absolutely requires me to use like IR, of course I'll slot it in. I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna be belligerent about it. But in those cases, I actually would prefer not to have Farina on the team. It just, the team constraints seem a little too harsh with no Viet Farina when I need IR. Because I just hate using Zhongli. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, my preference for using him is in in chambers against enemies that wouldn't really be knocking him around anyways. Like, pretty medium-sized enemies that are usually AoE, right? I think he's, he's just really good in AoE. Uh he has the unique property of being able to beam everything, right? Yeah. I think, lastly, like, just to defend the Zhongli users, right? You can go for Archaic Petra on Zhongli. Um, and, like, say you could slot in Jean. But I'm not really convinced that Noviet really has a personal damage problem <laughs> in almost any scenario. Um, like, if you specifically really, really like them together thematically, go ahead. Like, there's nothing stopping you. Like, you can fix the problems with a healer. You can fix it with Prototype Amber. It's just, it feels a little icky to me because it's just not as optimal. Not that I play it optimally always, but, like, it just, I don't like Zhongli. <laughs> That's it. Um, As for Coco meme... There's a lot of buzz about Mono Hydro, like, or Taser version. So, Kokomi, Farina, with, like, Fischl Kazua, or uh, Shingcho Yalan, right? Or Shingcho Jean, things like that. Or Shingcho Kazua. Just any more Hydro, maybe throw an Electro, and maybe some Animo in there. How do you guys mm -hmm. feel about that? Uh, for the Kokomi teams, I generally like sprinkling at least one Electro unit in there. Yeah, so uh, do I. It feel it feels bad without one. I like it, it's not yeah. that it feels bad; it just feels wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There is something to be said about like you know being able to Wait, have like more coverage for shields. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're fighting against like enemies that have shields that are weak to Hydro, then yeah, you can throw all four Hydro units or three Hydro units on one team, right? But That's this there piece. isn't, like, a reason to just not, you know, throw in Fischl or anything. <laughs> it's a pretty good unit, right? Um, but I do think it is neat that the the Mono Hydro teams do perform well, like, on paper, right? Um, and in practice, too, right? Like, it's it's pretty comfortable to play, like, Akomi with Farina. You're just I mean, you're chilling. Like, yeah, yeah, from a TC perspective, it drops the ER requirements. You get spec into yeah. more things. Um, has very good DPS. Not create Coco yeah. still, but like she should be hitting yeah. pretty hard. Um, yeah, yeah. As for, oh, I forgot what I was gonna say. But I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I like the teams. They're they feel nice. There's nothing wrong with them. I just, I, I do like Marina everywhere else. <laughs> yeah, I do like that. Um, Kakomi Taser now feels more compelling than it did before. Because before Farina, I didn't really like Kakomi Taser too much. Because Sucrose kind of exists yeah. and crowds out that space, right? Um, yeah, me too. I I think that that's one of the nicest things it did. Yeah, but now we we have like a very performant Taser Kokomi team, and there's it's very comfortable to play, right? Like more so than Sucrose, I'd say. Um, 
in terms of um the very hydro heavy teams i do like playing around with uh yulong singcho farina and jean and just driving with yulong you kind of get the same kind of play style as playing someone like yoi mia right but Elon driver giga chat yeah but you yeah. do a significant amount of damage like compared to a character like yoi mia right if people are okay with playing her right this this is a pretty strong this uh guy. way of playing yeah i've actually been doing taser with that team as well and i think i like it better yeah wow yelan driver yeah she's a great driver because bow attacks generally extend the range of uh sing cho's rain sword targeting it, it just makes it better you can notice the difference between driving with a melee sword and a bow right or that's, that's like fun. a long range so catalyst what, like the uh, again? run it by me again uh, Farina, Singsho, Yalan, and then Jean. Huh. I've been running Farina, Yalan, Fischl, Jean. Yeah, that that's also works pretty well. Okay, okay. There are some people who say that uh, we recommend Fischl too much, um, and that they actually prefer Yai. Any thoughts on that? <laughs> Just quick tangent. <laughs> hmm. Uh, depends what kind of player you are. I mean, we, we I... just looked at the best usage rate, right? Like, Yai yeah, is up there. She's yeah, yeah. She's, she she's even. Doing well. I think she's even further ahead than Fischl. Not for the reason I just brought her up, but like you know, something interesting to note. Yeah, I like them both. Usually with Yai, I kind of like her in those uh those wonky teams uh like Tainari with like spread and aggravate, and you have to do the split rotations. Um, I feel like for general use in a taser team i just kind of like fischl because it's quicker to deploy mm -hmm. but that's like a preference thing i do i do know that there's quite a bit of people who like just playing yai instead uh, but i don't think it's a a big difference in that i've never been a huge fan of yai in solo electro teams is like <clears throat> i feel like when you when you don't actually get to use the burst I don't really see her as an upgrade to official basically ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I when you're I solo electro, you're not getting enough ER to use your burst reliably. Yeah, the 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 play usually is just to burst every other rotation, which isn't as detrimental as it would be for other characters, because uh, a lot of Yai's damage is in her turrets, right? Mm -hmm. But it is definitely like not gameplay satisfying right for a person yeah. to not be able to press their buttons right i'm a psycho i like yai driving <laughs> like, <laughs> like yai driver with like shing cho jean farina it's not bad it's not i wouldn't say it's that great but it's you know it's not bad <laughs> um i think that's one of the nice things about farina you know you just it a lot of things don't feel not bad um, of course, we move on to healers, right? So two of the healers that maybe weren't that important before, but have definitely risen up in terms of what people think of them, um, Baiju and Jean. And of course, like we have all of these other units like Charlotte, we have Yao Yao, um, Kagomi, of course. Like there's so many of these like healers that have come back or come more into the limelight. How are we feeling about any of them? Um, do you feel that certain ones are better? Do you think like, and why do they just open up more team restrictions? Do they do more damage? What's up? Dude, I couldn't believe they made Mika good. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it would be possible. Um, no, no, I think it's good. Um, for the most part, like a lot of the healers have a like a more uh, a, like more of a presence, right, in team building, which is cool. Um, in particular, I think uh, some of them didn't really need to be better, right? Like Gene was pretty good before, and but then there are some healers that are just like needed help, like Mika. You can, you can consider maybe Noelle a healer, right? Like, but Noelle. Oh yeah. Noel before Farina patch is not not that good, right? And we have we, we even have like a pretty easy comparison to make, right? Hoya made Ito, right? So 
those two characters are very, very similar, so you can see the difference, right? But after this patch, I, I don't, is it a hot take to for me to think that Noel's just stronger than Ito if you have a Farina? It's also, I think, easier to obtain. Uh, if you're playing Noel Farina, you only have to get Farina. But if you play, if you're playing Noel Ito, I mean, I mean Ito uh, at all, right? Generally, you want like C six Goro, which is like insanely expensive, right? A, yeah. a C six on the four star. To be fair, I'm not that huge of a fan of Noel in Farina teams without Goro. Really, I think, in, I think in most situations it's kind of just a downgrade to using an animal unit if you're not actually getting Goro to increase Noel's damage. Because when you're getting Noel's damage, then you have something over the like Mono Hydro with Animal, which is that you have like much better AOE. But without it, it's like just a downgrade. So I, it it feels kind of bad to me. Okay, so what I've been running and enjoying was Noel Albedo. Farina, and then the flex slot, right, which could be Yelan. And the thing I liked about that team was I felt like I was getting good saturation of uh, of my buffs on a bunch of units, right? It's not just Noel using the damage yeah. buff. And that's why I feel like I didn't really need a Goro that badly, right? Because end of the day, like, technically speaking, right, a, a single five-star costs less than a c6 four star but the thing is you can get c6 four stars like over time accidentally from other banners so it just depends where you are but like if you're a player without any of these units yet it'd be quicker to get the farina in my opinion yeah i'm gonna yeah. need to accidentally get one of these kooky shinobus i still don't have one by the way <laughs> <laughs> um Man. so yeah i mean obviously there's some healers that come up to mind gene really good baiju really good miko really good sometimes noel like these full team healers right these are notably full team healers but what about the units like shinobu or bennett or you know four maidens mona <laughs> like how <laughs> how viable are these units with free now are we over rating like full team healing or is it just like like how comfortable is it to run a single healer right like how strong can these healers really be okay I think the four maidens Mona is kind of fake, but that's mainly because <laughs> at the end of the day, you're still working with Mona's kit, which isn't really ideal for oh my, a lot of these teams. Oh my god! But I think four maidens Bennett is real, and it's quite quite nice, right? Because Bennett, like most people, don't build him as a healer, but when you do, you'll <laughs> realize that he heals like 10k easily, right? In a tick. And that really mitigates his problem of not being able to heal past 70%. Because if you're under 70%, you can heal past that if your healing is enough. And while you're swapping through your units, you're going to be getting at least one tick of healing, right? While you're casting a burst or whatever. It does mean you have to sometimes change your rotations to get good fanfare coverage if you're at C0 Farina. But it's... It's probably ideal to just run uh, Four Maidens Bennett or Noblesse, but with a healer focus uh, artifact main stat, right? Okay, okay. Interesting. I noticed you didn't say anything about sh Kuki. Kuki. <laughs> I'm, I'm not as gassed on her right now, but I will admit I haven't been like playing with her too as much with Freena during my testing. Mainly because, like, think, man, it's not enough, I don't think. I, I think good. it's it's fine if you have Prototype Amber on your team. Yeah, yeah. But also, you know, it will be even better than using Cookie? Getting a second Prototype Amber on your team. Huge. <laughs> right. Yeah, this Nahida character can... <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, that's the thing, right? Like, you can compare Cookie with, like, her other peers and it really makes you <laughs> not feel good about uh how she works with farina i think it's definitely not an issue at c2 farina right because you, you get fanfare so quickly right you, it's less of a problem but okay. oftentimes kuki usually you put her in your team to do things like hyper bloom right so you can't make her heal much 
more. Yeah, but without her sacrificing your, you your skill. That's good yeah, for fanfare, that's, that's, right? Yeah, it's, it's not quite enough, yeah. especially <laughs> on this, the, the, the next rotations, right? You're, you're slowly getting lower and lower, and the differences are smaller each time, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, so, how do we feel about not running a healer's arena? I think it's wasting the unit. <laughs> because a lot of her value is not just a damage percent buff. It, it's She's a sub DPS or like an extra dam like off field damage unit on top of being a buffer, right? And I think it, it's really easy to not notice her damage because I, I would say out of all the turret characters in the game, her damage is the hardest to track visually, right? If you're playing, you're seeing three different numbers at uneven intervals. It's hard to tell how much damage your, your Farina is doing, right? If you're just playing compared to I don't know, someone like Albedo, right? Where you can consistently see like a singular number every two seconds and you can kind of get a feel of how much damage they're doing, right? But like on paper and in practice, right? Freena, when healed, when, when, when her whole team is healed uh, so they can sacrifice their health to increase her summons damage, she does a very respectable amount of damage. Like not even considering the fact that she's a buffer, right? Yep, I think... I think forgoing healing is a mistake. Um, you're there's just not really that many units in the game that can keep up with like how much damage you're losing on Farina, and yeah, they, like in that healer slot, right? So like, not only are you losing the damage bonus, it's kind of uncomfortable to permanently be at half health. Um, <laughs> I'm not a fan of it. I don't play perfectly, but um, I just, I'm not a real big fan of it. E even if I had a Zhongling shield, it's just not really that enjoyable of an experience that, like, if it lets up for, like, even a moment, I'll just get one shot or whacked to, like, 2,000 health. Um, but of course, like, how is her impact on the meta, right? Um, we have Farina, a Hydro Archon, but. We have some really strong Hydra units, right? We have Xingqiu, we have Yelan, and we have Nerviet. Like, how is she stacking, right? If you were to tell a new player, like, what their pool priorities should be, is Farina up there for you guys? Uh, in terms of five stars, yes, I would say so. But we do kind of get some illegal... <laughs> units for, for at the four star bracket, right? That are pretty Shopping powerful. Is free. <laughs> what about you, Zajo? You think? Do you think Freena might be better than Shingcho or Yelan? No, Yelan and maybe Shingcho. No. Hmm. I'm sure anybody can go back in our previous podcast, but Shingcho really is just him, you know. The eye really <laughs> healing, the damage resistance, the shred. He just, it's him. In fact, he applies so much Hydro that like sometimes, you know, it's too much because his little orbitals just apply Hydro too for why not? Yeah. Do you guys get that thing where you you feel like you're you're talking like a crazy person explaining why Sing Show is good just because his kit is so good at many different fragmented things? because <laughs> there's like... there's quite a bit of people who would disagree right that he isn't as good as some tc or say right well shing but... doesn't give me a 75 percent damage bonus therefore he's worse thoughts yeah i will say Ooh. i enjoy playing farina more but well depends right if <laughs> Yeah, I, I enjoy the idea of farina <laughs> more like the the system that she works in right like the the way the the character works right that's it's very neat uh whereas sing show is just they just gave him everything and he's strong right but it's not as interesting to me right i think okay. that's probably how a lot of people feel and they might even conflate like you know since farina does like all these interesting things right of course she would be like significantly better than sing show right okay and we'll, we'll just mm -hmm. i think for this next section here we we don't have to go into 
distinct detail, but do we have any thoughts on like festering desire, like her weapon choices, right? Festering desire, her signature, uh, Fluv, the pipe, the battle pass. Uh, you haven't mentioned her best weapon yet. Oh, yeah? What's that? Is that a... Uh, you... Favonia sword, of course. Who could forget? <laughs> Who could so yeah, forget? like how how do we feel yeah. about her gearing options? I think for a five star, she has quite a few good four star options. Um, she does by nature um, of her kit. Like there's just good options. Like if you've been playing since Dragon Spine, congratulations, your hmm. dedication has been rewarded. You get a festering desire. Um, and if you haven't, well, sucks to be you, I guess. Sucks to be you, mm -hmm. but I'm sure you've been watching Satchel seventy seven videos and have been pulling on the Favonius weapon banners. True. Brewing. <laughs> I will say, I think it is unfortunate that a lot of these four star weapons that are great on her uh, tend to lean towards giving crit rate, right? So if you, if you get a crit rate circlet, it can be very awkward sometimes, which I think they intended. I an right? HP hat. It's okay. Oh, nice. Huge. And her for five stars option, her five star options. Oh my God. Her signature. Obviously, primordial jig cutter for some. Some people have been even going key. Any thoughts on that? I, I think, think Sig sucks for her. Yeah, I think the signature is not great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let me explain before people get mad, right? Because the on like the weapon in itself is a good weapon, right? But in the context of Farina, when you look at the the priorities of what to get, right? C one versus Sig. C2 versus Sig. Usually you would go C2 before Sig, right? If you want to improve her. And then what that leaves you is you're in a position where you just have so much HP percent, so much damage percent that like that passive does nothing, right? It doesn't really do much. It, we ran calcs on it uh, a while ago and refinements on that sword was giving her 0.4% increased damage huge so <laughs> like it, massive, but it is actually. it is an 88 percent crit damage uh sword right which would work on most other characters pretty well right the one situation where i would say you can maybe consider pulling it is you have c2 but you don't plan on going for c4 and you have a crit rate hat <laughs> which is very specific right so typically i wouldn't wait that's me it. i'm c3 right now yeah. <laughs> Even then, uh, Even then, are there that many T's or it's better than Key? Not really. See, that's the thing. Key is just kind of sick on her. <laughs> yeah, because like Especially... a lot of her teams benefit from the EM buff to the team, and a few of her teams actually benefit from the EM buff to herself as well. Yeah. And yeah. the teams that do, the EM buff is fucking huge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's... If you didn't show us her kit, you look at the weapon, it's like, that's a good weapon. And then you see her kit, and you're like, well, this weapon doesn't do much anymore compared to its peers. Okay. <laughs> is what so, it is. I think for our last couple of questions, um, I pulled them from the Nahi, or the Farina Mega Thread. Uh, would you say for Farina Cons, when you compare them to Nahida and Raiden, who are notorious for having pretty good consolation early consolations right c2 raiden c2 nahida and c2 Frina. i mean i think they achieve different things yeah of course like raiden's cons make her stronger but she's a carry and like if you're not planning on playing a raiden team or even if you are eventually you might get tired of playing a raiden team and want to play other teams and when you do your constellation is just sitting there not doing anything right mm -hmm. yeah Okay. With Nahida and, and Farina, because they can be played on a lot of different teams, I think that it's more likely that they see more play, I guess. Okay. I mean, yeah. it's it's good to know because, um, you know, some people just really like Raiden, right? There's a lot of yeah, people yeah. That, on that thread who really wanted Raiden. So it's good to let people know, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, this is something I worked on earlier today i was looking at a uh, constellation improvements on like eula teams right because eula can use raiden can also use farina and nahida sometimes right um and like if you're not playing raiden hyper carry right 
Raiden constellations aren't doing that much. Like in in the Eula teams, right? If you get C two Raiden, your damage, your team DPS doesn't go up that much compared to Farina or Nahida. Okay. And then our our last question here, maybe we didn't spend too much time on this, but we can circle back now. There's other units like Mona and Kazuo who also have damage percentage buffs. Why is Farina different? Even though we just talked about how difficult it can be to slot her in, you know, she has uh, problems with healing. Like, why, why is it that people or we think she's good? Um, and I guess I got to start. I mean, just because she has like the team constrictions doesn't mean she actually feels bad. Right, a lot of teams typically already slot in a healer or a shielder, necessitating that you use a defensive slot here. Hurts some carries, but for a lot of teams, they actually really, really like this pretty much non-conditional damage bonus. There's like really high uptime. It's really easy to get up and going. Like it's just good. And on top of that, she, you know, she summons a crab that does like three trillion damage. Right, she does her own self damage. So, yeah, she's not just an off-field support or a buffer. She's also her own source of damage. Mm, I think... Uh, okay, what separates her from like characters like Mona or Shenha and Goro, right, who also buff their respective archetypes, is that, again, she's... Buffing while also being a sub DPS unit, right? On the condition that you have a healer, which for a lot for some teams that's not a big deal, right? Because you would run a healer anyways, um, not just to keep yourself alive, but but the he healer sometimes comes as a buffer as well, right? As you can see with Mika or Baiju, technically Baiju does buff uh, Dendro reactions ever so slightly, right? But what are we gonna say with this? Uh, I also think that the way that she executes uh, the ability, uh, the way that she grants her buff, makes her can be very appealing compared to someone like Kazuas, for example. Right? If you're not needing Kazuo for grouping, buffing your team with Farina can generally be easier uh, in terms of execution. All you need to do is switch to Freena, EQ, and then switch to your healer. But I do think uh, Freena does crowd out some of the more hyper-specific uh, support units like Goro or Shenha right now. Because her I buff... Sara with her. <laughs> yeah, Sara too. Yeah, I forgot about her. Yeah, because they, they made her buffing so, so high, but it works with all the elements, right? So as long as her buffing is better than those uh, specific niche units, it's a little hard to justify using those units uh, unless you really need uh, an extra team slot. Uh, because as, as we know, Farina can technically take up two team slots. All right. That is all, unless you have something to say, Zeta. No, not really. Okay, perfect. Well, that leaves us at 43 minutes since the start, and we've hit our goal of keeping it within, you know, the hour. And um, as promised, we have like five to ten minutes of Q&A, and, you know, we can just chat about whatever we want now. Um, but, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the chat while um, I do the outros. Thank you, everyone, so much for listening in and tuning in um i'd like to also thank zajif and kb for joining me today it was actually very hard to schedule this um i was at anime new york city like literally two days ago with ten ten and um in short notice very quick short notice right before thanksgiving we managed to get this one out before farina disappears right so thank you everyone um leave suggestions for what you want us to talk about next um we might do like Nerviet or something next. I'm not too sure. Honestly, we could do even Risley if we really wanted to. Um, but okay, we're not gonna do Risley, but yeah. Um, <laughs> and why do you gotta Damn. do them like that? Thank you so much, guys. Yeah. 
Okay, so five <laughs> minutes of questions. Here we go. All right. Are there any go. team archetypes that cannot use Farina? Um, I think one of the archetypes that probably doesn't benefit as much as everyone else is probably off the top of my head, Nilo. Nilo blue uh, teams don't really get that much. I mean, the base damages of your units. I kind still of like it. still often in Nilo teams. Yeah. I like yeah. it gameplay. As in, you don't have to worry about your, uh, your, your Hydro app is just always happening everywhere all at yeah. once. And you don't have to worry about positioning a Jellyfish or continually auto-attacking to proc uh, Rain Swords. You, it just happens ambiently. It's the most... I mean, it, it, it really ever, is right? hard to even think of a team that doesn't really use her that well. Um, Zhao? <laughs> I don't. I don't quite like Zhao with yeah, her. Yeah, Zhao works. Um, I mean, I mean, the thing is, is like, e even for Hyper Bloom teams, like, you like that base damage on Nah Hytham, right? You like that base damage yeah. on like on yeah, like a lot yeah. of units. You know, I, I don't know if there really is a unit out there that doesn't enjoy it. Razor. Throwing. <laughs> it's not great in Thundering Furry. <laughs> but it's, you would be it's the guy to great, that. But... <laughs> okay. Uh, I feel like Linny doesn't use her well, right? You yeah, just get I, killed, right? I, I, I've tested it. it. It's fine. It's just you're... You're even more reliant than Lenny's like default non shielder teams on everything going right. It's a lot easier for things to go wrong because you're consuming more of your own HP. And uh, if you have to like step away from the enemies to dodge things, uh, Shanling stops hitting. And if Shanling stops hitting, you can lose your Pyro Aura and then maybe even get a Hydro Aura. Which actually significantly hurts your damage. Mm -hmm. But when things go right, it's it's still pretty good. Okay. Here, here's an interesting question. Um, which characters improve the most with Farina and Mara, the Mara Hunt set? Right. I, I Since... think it's Noel for sure. Noel's like the biggest. Yeah. Biggest winner. Would you recommend people use MH on everyone? <laughs> I mean, the, everyone is saying, like, MH is the new best in slot set for so and so and so and so. Do you think it's true? Uh, I mean, when you're, you're playing Farina, it's always, at the very least, competitive with whatever signature set you could be using instead. Yeah, right. And you can farm for your Farina at the same time. <laughs> yep. I will say it's. Personally, I don't. I'm not gonna slap it on every character, even though it's ideal. Because, you know, you, you would have to change your artifacts every time you don't yeah, play. Yeah, that's, right? that's very annoying. True. Right, that's very For annoying. people who play a lot of different teams, it might not be the greatest idea. Right. But in the case of Noelle, for example, she's staying on uh, M Hunt for me, right? Because why would I ever play Noelle without her? <laughs> yeah. Right. But like, so some characters that are very that are more tightly coupled to her. You can mm -hmm. you can make the case that yeah you can throw uh, M Hunt and you're you're yeah, good. That makes sense. Okay, and here's the last question I think: Is Jean really that significant in Farina teams over using other AOE healers and Kazuma? Um, it's hard to think of teams where you have enough slots for that. Um, an AOE healer and Kazuma and Farina and your carry. Um, Typically, AoE healers, like, they don't really condense very well in terms of, like, team slots. I, I think you could do mm -hmm. it with, like, Kazuha Bennett, <clears throat> maybe. But it there really isn't that many AoE healers that are just so good at, like, their application that they can really enable their carry to do something. Yeah, I don't mind Kazuha Bennett, for example. But uh, I feel like... You really are getting a little greedy when you go for Kazuo Farina plus whatever, right? Um, yeah. I think one notable example might be Charlotte. You could do any crowd carry Farina, Charlotte, Kazuo, but other than that, the like the other AoE healers just aren't really that great at um 
enabling things. <laughs> okay. And that wraps it up, guys. Thank you for joining us. We're at 50 minutes almost on the dot. So catch Perfect. you all next time. All right.